Well, it is Friday morning. First thing I noticed when I got here, Liz, was the wind was up. You bet. Everybody can feel it. All these little feather banners out here are going crazy. People's shots are going crazy. Uh, it's Friday afternoon. It's the third day of the USDGC. And we're, we're still not sure. After the flip-flop on the board yesterday, David Felberg is doing his best to stay on that lead card and to hold on. That's right, he is. However, a new leader, John Key, actually, who is sitting 11 down to start this third round. Shot two over, 91 the first round, and then turned around and shot 13 under his projected score of 89.76 And wait, this is round. his third sanctioned tournament ever through the PDGA. Can you believe that? Well, he is in the lead of the PDGA. We are going to get around today, maybe let you see some holes of golf we'll let you hear from John and just see how he's handling the pressure but not just John is here all the players are here so here's some PDJ player talk Friday morning at the USDGC well, all right, we have been able to track down Dave Feldberg. He is the 2005 champion of the USDGC, and he's here to challenge his performance this week. So what's your projected score, first off? Uh, 28 under. 28 no, under, is that for the? Under. I think 24 under. Is that for the week? That's for the week. All right, and do you think you're going to be able to attain that and maybe even uh, maybe shoot, what, 30 under? Well, when I won, I shot 23 under, I think. No, I think it was 24 under, actually, when I won. <laughs> so I'm projected to win. All right, and so what, how are you, uh, do you still have the same vibe this week as, as, as the past USDGCs? Are you as, as excited? I am kind of excited. You know, I'm excited to play the course and stuff. I just wish that we, you know, we got to, you know, take some kinks. This year will be the test run, but I think that they'll find out that the higher players shouldn't give as much handicap. These players out here that, you know, they're out here, these 940 guys. Those are 940. They're pretty good. They can throw Frisbees. They just have some, you know, most of them are mental struggles when they get into competitions and so their physical ability is there and so it's very simple for them to beat us and I think that once we learn and try this tournament a couple of times we'll find a way to to mix the players so that I can be competitive with one of them before you know when we do no handicap obviously I'm not they're not competitive and now we've given them so much handicap I'm not competitive right it seems so, like you have to shoot just a phenomenal set of rounds along with all the other high rated players to be able to be up at the top right and so I think that once we figure out that formula it'll be more exciting in the years to come but I think for those players that are coming this year this will be very exciting for them and and hopefully somehow we'll at least be in some of the top cards some of those top players to give them someone to play with and feel the pressure and oh sure i know there's a lot of guys out there that are just gonna be so excited because they got a chance to play on the same card as david feldberg yep or you know they beat ken climo <laughs> right the exactly see it so I, I think it should be exciting i hope it will be i mean here's the, my stat of the week i have to give ken climo five-time champion four strokes <laughs> barry schultz the three-time champion i give him eight strokes and then I'm going to give this, this European guy, they call him UC Maresma or something. Oh, yeah, he, that he guy. me the last two times I was here, I think. <laughs> i got to give him 12 shots. So. Wow, 12 shots over the entire week. That's Well, it's a huge goal for you to set up and uh, shoot a great round out here. I know we're excited to see you. This is Dave Feldberg, 2005 champion. Don't let me beat you, Ken Kylo, by four. <laughs> That'd be bad. <laughs> Well, we've been able to catch up with Phil Arthur for the PDGA Player Talk. Phil, last minute qualifier, driving up to Atlanta, or from Atlanta. Now, what happened right at the qualifying there? Well, I, I had gotten in, I checked the, uh, the website, and it said that any rounds before dark. You get as many as you can in before dark. So I left Atlanta about 12 o'clock, got here about 3.30, quarter to four, went up to pay to qualify, and they said we closed at 2.30. And I was like, oh, that's not good. And so I just said, whatever. I went out and played my round with Jerm and Ricky. And, and you uh, shot Wolf. a pretty good score. Yeah, what was your score you shot yesterday? 57. Wow, yeah, nice it shooting. Was solid. I'll take that all week. Yeah, right, now that you're yeah. going to be here all week. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, I came in with a 57. I took my card up, and I said, it's not dark yet. You know, let me know what you can do. And and uh, JP, he said, I wrote the rules and it says right there, all the rounds before dark. And I did, so they, they said you're in. So it worked out. All right, well, we're so happy that you're in. I know everybody's looking forward to getting, to be able to play with you. The new format this year, how, yeah. do, how do you feel about that new format? Um, well, to be honest with you, I have no idea what it is. What is the format? Well, the, the format being the projected score versus oh, your performance what, score. Right. And, I'm, uh, you know, I'm anxious to see what's going to happen. It's going to be fun for a lot of guys. I'm going to enjoy myself, go out and have a good time, and uh, try to be an encouragement to some of these guys because they're going to take some numbers. Right on. So yeah. you, have you been traveling a lot this year? Yeah. Yeah, I've been all over the place. I've been everywhere but Europe. I uh, missed the European tour uh, by uh, a couple of days. Some things had come up and couldn't make it out, so that was disappointing but the season's been pretty solid having fun 
and uh, I'm, right now I'm coming out of a slump, so I'm excited to play. <laughs> well, we are excited to see what kind of score you put up. If you put it, if you play like the qualifying round, I'm sure you'll have no trouble making the yeah. way to the top. Yeah, I'm really anxious to see how this whole handicap system pans out because the top players with the experience still should have, uh, I think, a heads heads up on it. So we'll see. Sure, absolutely. Well, this is Phil Arthur and PDGA Player Talk. We'll bring you more coverage from the USDGC. Well, all right, we've been able to track down Big Mike Leslie and Tom Stevens. How are you guys doing today? Feeling great. Now both of you played, yes? Yeah, yes. All right. It's and my third year. Third year playing, nonetheless. Now, you being a third year player, how many years have you been here? This is my first time. First year, so. I got to hear a lot about it from him. And what, tell, tell me what he said. Um, be careful. <laughs> Take your time on each shot. It's one of those courses where uh, you have to go for less risk and reward and just kind of play within your ability, especially with the handicaps out here. Your best chance is just to play within your means and hope other people, you know, don't, I guess. What was your favorite hole out there? Oh, today? I kind of like hole four, I think. I didn't really play it well, but it's my favorite one out here. Well, it's got that horseshoe uh, green, and it's got a really tight tunnel off the very opening, so it's one of the hardest holes out here. In fact, it's right by us right now, so I hope you, uh, what did you take on it today? Uh, today I took a five on it. A five, okay, well that's not a bad score on that hole. It's a really technical hole. How about you, Big Mike? I think I missed the OB, or I'm, I threw out of bounds and still fived it. So, I mean, well, I, great recovery. Uh, the, the ropes were a little tighter this year than I remember them. I think they scooted every, made everything just a little tighter. And I think with the stroke and distance and all the AMs playing, it was a long round today. Really long round. I think it was six hours is what we played today. Extremely long round. There are still yeah. guys out on the course right now as yeah. we speak. But we didn't have um, really as many weights, and the, the spotters did an amazing job today. And That's like, the best part of it. We saw the kids out there. We ran by, gave all the kids high fives when we saw them. It was pretty cool. They were pretty excited to see us. And, well, that's right. Educational disc golf at its uh, finest. Seeing the kids out here is the best part. I mean, that's... It's the future of our sport, you know, and without the kids playing it, then there's really not a lot for us. You bet, and you know, those are true words, and they're words that we need to pump into every community across the country if we for want sure. our sport to grow. It's, it's surprising to drive around the town and see the schools with baskets at the schools, and, and to me, you know, that just, that's like almost tear jerking, because like, disc golf saved my life, and if it wasn't for this sport, I, I really don't think I'd be around. And so I, I cherish every round, every minute, practice rounds, casual rounds. Well, you just, just gave me tingles, sport. you know, amazing with what sport. you said. So we're so glad to have you out here and you out here. Where'd you guys come from? Spokane, Washington. Washington, holy cow, drive or fly? We flew. flew yeah. oh, she was smart. My arms are tired from it. Still took me <laughs> Well, fellas, we wish you the best of luck all week long. Thanks for catching up with us. Thanks and a lot. Thank green you. is good, right? Green is good. <laughs> we love you, man. <laughs> Thank you. Well, Liz, we're gonna stay right here. Uh, possible carnage, possible birdies. This is an infamous hole. Big numbers are racked up all the time. That's right, and I just look over your shoulder now and I see the lead card making their way to hole 17. We're gonna give you a little bit of a different angle here. This is from the green shot, so you'll get to see some of these drives that come in. Uh, John on the lead Key, card today. Bill Sharon, Dave Feldberg, and Dutch Napier, and these guys have been battling it out all day long. You better believe it. I mean, this is still USDGC. Well, you know, a couple of big stories today. Uh, Ken Climo pulled out. UC Maresma pulled out. Phil Arthur pulled out. Well, Dude, he hasn't officially pulled out, but it's uh, definitely projected to pull out tomorrow. I saw Phil's head. It was swollen from the pain. And he Cam doesn't Todd want is playing hurt. He's got a staph infection. He can barely walk. He just made about a 60 footer on hole 17. And now stepping up to the tee, there's Dutch Napier. This is the lead card. And this is hole number 17, Friday afternoon. I mean, the day is almost done. And these guys are still battling with. That's right. Dutch is well known around the tour for all of the NT events that he frequents as he is 18th in the point series. Well, he is lining up, I believe, the flick. Yes, he absolutely is taking the flick. And if you've got this, this is one safe, safer shot well, for the it's up hole. in the air. It looks high enough. It looks like it's got enough speed to make it to the safe bailout zone. But, oh, boy, that is oh, on top of the hay bales. He is on the hay bales. Oh, he's he's got to run over, over and check. I don't believe I've ever seen one, a uh, Heiser. Oh, Liz, the red flag. I mean, he's, he has just puffily landed on the hay bales. It didn't bounce it, it just sort of absorbed it. Yeah, I don't know if I've ever seen that happen before, to land on top of a hay bale. Wow, and, and obviously you have to be on the inside line of that OB. 
Well, well he's got to put just another right. about a foot on this, and he's sitting safe. But well, he's throwing three. It'll be interesting to see if he chooses to go more aggressive to try to get the uh, park shot here. Well, that's oh, that's, trouble, that's OB for sure. All right, well, this is lead card action. Again, just, there's so much pressure and stress. He's been playing good uh, the last couple of rounds here at the USDGC, but this is hole 17. This one hole can make or break your whole week. This is the lead card. If Dutch doesn't stop, he will not be on the lead card tomorrow. He needs to get this thing on the green, in the basket, and out of his head. This is his fifth shot. Well, there's definitely frustration in his uh, warm-up routine here, but See if he can hold it together. This oh, one looks real, a lot better. He's really laced this one. All right, that one's going to work out just fine, and he should be able to stab at that putt. So he's in on one, he's out on two, he's in on three, he's out on four. He's up on five. He'll be putting for a double par six. Well, this is Bill Sharon up on the pad now. He's going to set up beforehand as well. Uh, this is only a 918 rated player, and can you imagine that he's on the lead card? He's got the cameras down here. We're talking about him over here. Dave Feldberg on his card. Yeah, plus he just watched a great player. All right, well, he, Boy, he didn't seem like he had too. any problem with it, though, as long as it gets... That needs to get down. Oh, it saved it. He's in bounds for sure. He He's is. about as far away from the basket as you can get, but he is still in bounds. <laughs> he will be able to take his meter. Oh, this is our leader. This is John Key. At least at the beginning of the day, he was the leader. And looky here, he's just going to lay it up. Uh, I believe he may have taken a trick from Dave Feldberg's bag, as Dave Feldberg is also going to lay it up. And one going on the left side, one going on the right side. John Key projected with a four here, as well as Bill Sharon. We'll see how they handle it. This is the lead card, number 17. This is John Key, the leader. Where he's got a headwind, Liz, maybe, I don't know, 12 miles an hour or so. Now, do you think that Dave threw his just a little bit further so he could get a read on that wind? Well, he's not necessarily, Dave's so confident. He's been playing it that way. Oh, that's boy, trouble. that's definitely that OB. big trouble. No chance. He knew it right out of his hand, too. He exclaimed, uh, not a real happy sound. Well, in on two, out on three, this is John's fourth shot. Well, a lot of these players, as soon oh, as they go OB, too. they don't even take a second to recalibrate. They just jump back at the at the shot. Barely over. All right, Dave Felberg. Our 1040 rated golfer, just accomplishing phenomenal things this weekend. It's gonna be close. Oh, close to the basket. Well, what did you think I was talking about? <laughs> well, let's uh, follow these guys as they walk down to the green. Well, they're making their way onto the green now. Dutch just disgusted with himself. Well, he, again, he's a thousand rated player. He's, this type of event isn't something that should shock him or uh, surprise him in any way. He knows what the USDGC is. He knows this hole and he knows that this can happen here. Well, Bill Sherman gonna move in now and he's gonna be Liz as far away as you can possibly get. He's gonna get to take his meter. That's right, uh, Bill Sharon though, actually. Uh, Again, he's out of Pennsylvania, and he is pretty far away from the bucket, but... Really, the problem here is if we're, we are in the middle position instead of the long position. If this was in the left position, you could miss a putt and go OB. So he's going to go with this pretty aggressive. It's a good 20, maybe 23 feet shorter than the, the left position from where he sits. Sure. He, I mean, he's 918 rated. I think he made a wise decision in not running that putt. Well, now here's the leader found a little trouble. That's it's right, John Key, 880 rated. His projected score is a four here, so he could still, you know, control the damage. Right, he can take a couple of shots. All right. Well, he was in on one out on two, up on three, so that was for his projected par. But his projected round is at 89. That's right, Billy, and that's just, it, it's quite hard to keep up on the exact scoring of this tournament. Well, it's, it's really a wait and see where everyone else did. I'm pretty good with math, been. but some of these numbers are just a little more than I want to do. And there's Dutch. All right, Dutch, you get to move on to the next hole. Well, a tough hole for Dutch. And, and you see right now, you've heard about 17. That's why it's infamous. You, you just seen LaVon Wolf rack up an 11, and you just seen the lead card with troubles. This is Friday afternoon at the USDGC. Oh, Liz. Number 17.
Well, it has been a huge day. I mean, you guys have got golf, hole number 17. Oh with my card. gosh. You got to see some players or hear some players talk to the PGA player talk. Right now, it's the last putts drop. The music started. Kenny Climo is fixing to start his clinic. That's right. But first, the performer of the day. That's right. Today, Clay Held out of uh, Wilmington, South Carolina North area. Carolina. N Wilmington, North Carolina. He had the best performance score of seven down, and he's going to get a check written in his name to benefit Habitat for Humanity. Awesome. Way to go, Clay. A great day today at seven down. Now, things have shook up yet again. Uh, Are you kidding? That's got crazy on the card today. Uh, Dave Feldberg, big news. He is not going to be on the top card tomorrow. He, however, he is tied for that fourth place spot. He can still maybe win this thing. He's uh, nine strokes out, I believe. Well, that is big news, but not the biggest news. The biggest news, King Climo out again. Arm, tendonitis, pulled out of the Beaver State Fling, pulled out of the Pro Worlds, was ready to go. Pulled out on hole number 13 today. He will not be performing any longer this week, but he is still going to be here doing the clinic. UC Maresma also pulled out. Cam Todd, his right ankle is twice as big as his left ankle. He's got a staph infection. He was limping on the practice grounds. He made it through all 18. I don't know if Cam will be able to finish the, the event himself. And Phil Arthur. Phil's head just hurts and says he just he's he's just done for now. I mean, it's a very taxing event for all these players. You know, none of the top performers, other really than Dave, is really coming out and performing. But they put such pressure on them to have phenomenal rounds is the only way that they can win. And there's even some interesting stories about how uh, an 880 rated player got all the way up to the lead card and is shooting so phenomenally. So, well, uh, from what we've heard, uh, the guy that was leading 880 had a shoulder injury. Played some rounds left-handed. He's really more of a player than just three rounds that we were saying because that was all the documented proof we could find. He's about a 950 to 970 rated player, and that's about what he's been playing out here. He is no longer in the lead, though. No, not at all, Billy. We've got Bill Sharon in the lead now. He has got a comfortable four-stroke lead over the previous leader, John Key. He's sitting at 10 down. And then the young man we were talking of, John Key, what a great day he had. I mean, he had David Felberg pushing him all day. He was in the lead card. He had the media and the people, and he's still on that lead card in second place. He could win this championship, Liz. You know, absolutely. It's it's all out there. It's, again, based on their performance, not necessarily their raw score, so anything can happen. Sitting in third place, uh, just two strokes off of second place, and six strokes off of first place is Patrick May. All-American disc golfer out of Augusta State. In fourth place, rounding out the lead card, Dana Vici at three down, and he's actually tied with David Feldberg. So, you know, it's a little scary for these guys to have to have David running them down from the ease of the second card because he is really going to be able to put a move on tomorrow. Well, Dana is a face that everyone sees at the USDGC. He has qualified for the regular event and played in the regular event and actually cashed at the regular event. So he's the only one going into tomorrow's round on the lead card that has experience here. All right, we'll see how it all plans out. We'll be here with you until the last putt drops. This is the USDGC. It's Friday night. I'm Billy Crump. I'm Liz Carr. And we are Clash DVD.